Welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. We're not inside the stitchery today. Today is a tutorial video. Today we are making a tutorial so you can use the treble crochet stitch that you learned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very simple. It's a headband. So grab some yarn, grab a hook. I will tell you all the supplies you need in the next moment. <laughs> and let's get started. I thought it would be kind of fun if we could do something you guys could wear. So how about a headband? That's pretty easy. And anybody can make this. It can be any size. It doesn't even matter, you know, if you're a child, if you're an adult, man or woman, you know, it doesn't matter. You can all wear this headband pattern because it's going to fit you. So what do you need to make it? Well, obviously you need some yarn. I am using Big Twist Value. This is a Joann's brand yarn and I'm using yellow in uh, honor of Endometriosis Awareness Month. If you noticed, uh, my one of my flower bookmarks was also yellow. Yep, that was on purpose. <laughs> so you need four weight. 100% acrylic yarn. You need a yarn needle, a stitch marker, five millimeter hook, scissors. You can also use a 5.5 millimeter or a six millimeter. It really doesn't matter actually. So, so let's get started. Make a slip knot. Remember two fingers, twist, pull through. You are going to chain whatever number you need to fit around your head. It doesn't matter if it's 50 chains. It doesn't matter if it's a hundred chains. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, 15 chains. I don't know, making it for a doll or something. You just need to have the two ends meet. So say this is a chain. This is the end of my chain. This is the beginning. They need to meet on my head without me pulling too much. So this has to be a loose fit. In other words, whatever number I chain, when I put it around my head to see if it fits, it needs to not be super stretched. When I do that, it needs to be pretty loose, almost not stretched at all. Okay. So you make whatever number chain you need, and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, so my chain is 80. So when I put it around my head, I am measuring from the back of my head to my forehead, just putting it around there like that. And the ends either meet or almost meet. And when I mean almost, I mean like there better be like, you know, only that much of a difference, like a pinky of a difference. Um, cause when you stretch it, it'll fit. Now you need four extra chains because the turning chain, exactly. You need a turning chain and you're making a treble crochet. So how many do we need? We need four. So one, two, three, four. See how I left my finger there? <laughs> That was on purpose. So we're skipping one, two, three, four, and into the, oop, right there, the fifth. But we wanna make our lives so much easier, so we are going to crochet in the back bump. Don't worry, it's still easy to see. Oop, there we go, okay. One, two, three, four. Ah. One, two, three, four. Here's number five. That's where our hook is going. And if you want to mark that, go ahead. Wrap your yarn twice. One, two. And insert the hook into the bump. This is kind of awkward to do. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> 
Okay. Wrap, pull up. Wrap, go through two. Wrap, go through two. Wrap, go through two. Hooray! Now I am going to mark this top stitch right next to my hook. Because I'm going to need it in a minute. <laughs> okay. You are going to treble crochet in every other stitch because we are going to chain one, skip one on the bottom, skip a bump, and then treble into the next bump. Go through two, go through two, go through two. Chain one skip a bump, treble into the next bump, go through two, go through two, go through two. So it should be looking like that. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Okay. Chain one, wrap twice, skip a bump, into the next bump, insert your hook, wrap, pull up the loop, four loops on your hook, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two. Okay, you are going to do that the entire length of whatever your chain is. I will meet you before you do your very last stitch right here. So I will help you so you make sure you go into the bump and not the knot. Okay? If you need any help, you can watch what we just did again. You can go to the treble crochet video, which I will link in the iCards. And I will meet you right before the last chain. Okay. So... With mine, I have three bumps left and that won't work out evenly for me to chain one and then skip one because then I'll have a random chain over here. So I am going to chain one and I am going to do a treble crochet two together. So if you two have this issue where it doesn't work out evenly for you, then follow along with this tutorial and um, everything should work out for you. So make sure you chain one, wrap twice like a normal treble, skip one like you normally would, go into the next one, bring up a loop, go into the next one, the next bump, make sure you go into the bump and not the knot. Okay, come on. Make sure your knot is still there. Now, bring your yarn through that. Go through three. See that funny little weird thing I went through? Go through two and go through two. And look at that. It almost looks like a regular treble crochet. So that's the one I'm going to go with. And if you guys want to do that too, you can back up the video and watch that again. Okay, but for those of us who are moving on to the next row, we are going to do something that unless you have watched my tips and tricks secret sessions video, especially episode four, you have not learned yet. It is called the alternative turning chain. And I prefer it so much more <laughs> than just making a chain every time. So what you're going to do is you're not going to chain anything and you're going to turn your piece. So. See the first stitch right here? Woo! I'm going to use the eye of the needle actually this time. Okay. See right here? That's where we're going to go. I'm going to get a little bit closer. All right. We're going to go in this stitch right here, right off. We are not going to chain anything. We're going to insert our hook into that stitch 
and we're going to make a single crochet. Now you're going, Shannon, that's not tall enough. You're right. We're not done yet. Just make the single crochet. Go through two. Okay, this is a single crochet and you recognize it from the single crochet tutorial. This loop right here, so this is the top of your stitch. Okay, it's gonna get a little complicated so I'm gonna try to show you. If you were making a row of single crochet, you know, they look like this. This is the top, this is the side, and this stitch right here is like the side loop. We are going to insert our hook into this loop. I will show you as slowly as I can. Okay, so I'm going to try and come closer to the camera because I can't zoom in anymore. All right. Insert your hook into this loop right here. And bring your yarn through one, just that loop. Okay? Go through two. Now we're gonna insert our hook through this side loop. Bring the yarn through just that one and go through two. Then we're gonna do it one more time. So it's right here, it's this loop right there. Okay, wrap, bring your yarn just through that loop and then bring through both. Congratulations, you have just made a alternative turning chain four. And you will see it written sometimes as ATC4. I'll put it on the screen. The number has to do with how many times you do that. And it also establishes the height. Chain one. This is really easy. You made a treble crochet right here. Every time you made a treble crochet, you're going to go in directly where that treble crochet was. So wrap your yarn twice like a normal treble. The top of the treble here is where you go to make your next one. Whoop. See? It makes like a little box now. Chain one. On top of every treble below is where you will make your next one. Just don't forget the chain one, that is important. But it's a whole lot easier to find these than it is to find the bumps. I will meet you when you get to about the stitch right before your the stitch right before your last one. So where my stitch marker is. Okay. I have three stitches left. How about you? So I chained one and I'm going to go in this one right here, make my treble, go through two, go through two, go through two, chain one. And I have two again. Hmm. So what do I do? I'm going to put them together. Yep. I'm going to put them together again. I'm going to wrap twice, insert my hook, pull up a loop, insert my hook into the top of this chain four, make sure it's the actual chain four, one, two, three, four, right there, go through, remember this thing, this funny thing hanging on your hook, that's still a loop, so we're going to go through three, technically. Go through two, go through two. Okay.
We're almost done. I know. I know. It's hard to believe. But, okay, I have to say something. This is really cool in white <laughs> for Halloween. Because doesn't it look like like a spine <laughs> on a skeleton? Just saying. Okay. So we are almost done, but we want it to be a little more secure and we want to bring the two ends together. So take your two ends. There really is no right side or wrong side in this case, but it's completely up to you. Um, they're both pretty identical. So I'm just gonna do mine this way where my tail is over here. And I just finished over here and I'm gonna bring them together. Just make sure that they're, you know, not twisted. And then I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to tighten that chain like this. I'm going to pull on this tail. Because I really don't need it. I just needed it to be able to turn. <laughs> so I'm going to bring the two pieces like this and line them up. And if you want, you can take your stitch marker and kind of pick. So down here, you would have had a chain one and then the top of the chain, so, or the start of the chain. So I'm gonna take that and then the corner where my knot is and my tail is, and I'm gonna cinch those two together with a stitch marker so that I know where to stop, basically, so I can keep everything even. And at the top, I'm just gonna hold it with my fingers as soon as I figure out where the top is. There we go. So my top is here. So even though I put those together, this is going to be where I join, not here, here. So I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch like this. And for some reason, my yarn is not cooperating today. Come on. You're a real stitch. You can do this. There we go. Okay. <laughs> So you have something that looks like that. And then you're gonna slip stitch through it. Okay. I don't wanna make this difficult for you guys at all. So I'm gonna do this the easiest way I can think of. Here's your alternative turning chain. We have this piece right here, this piece right here, and this piece right here. We're going to use these to go inside and slip stitch to the other side. And on the other side, we have just a regular chain. Pick both loops of that chain. See? And then slip stitch them together. So here's the other one right here. Two loops, so you should have three. Slip stitch. Here's the other one right here. Two loops, slip stitch. Okay, now down here, we have this one. And Oh, this one right there. See these bumps? These will work. Okay, we'll use those. So we're gonna use that side stitch I just found. There it is. <laughs> I was like, where is it? And I just lost the bump. Where did it go? Oh, there it is, okay. Feel free to mark anything I point out so you don't lose it like I did. <laughs> And then the side, which isn't cooperating. Come on. There we go. And that bump I saw, there it is. Okay, this one's really easy. You marked it. <laughs> so we're gonna go through this bottom chain right there and this area where the knot is and we're going to slip stitch those together so 
should look something like that. Chain one. So we chained one, and we're gonna fasten off. A decently long tail. Pull your yarn through. I'm actually gonna take these two and knot them together. You don't have to, I'm just gonna do it because I want to. <laughs> And then we're going to sew in our tail. So I'm just going to go just back and forth through these stitches right here. On the side of the slip stitch. the other way. Whoops, sorry. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, and then the little tail, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to go up and under like that, and then I'm going to go along the other side. In and out. You just don't want this coming out, especially when it's on your head. <laughs> that would be, that'd be sad. <laughs> okay, that should be good. And then you just flip it inside out. Now you can make this the front or the back because you could add a little bow or a flower or something right there. Or you can make this the back and then have this in the front. And that's all there is to it. You've just made a headband. If you liked this video, Please like, share, and subscribe to the Yarn Zebra family. We would love to have you and have you back for more tutorials and videos. Please turn on your notification bells because you never know when I will post a new video or tutorial. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. If you make one, please tag me on Instagram or email me, but I would love to see what you make. Wasn't that fun? And look, you've got a gift or something you can wear yourself. Thank you for joining me today. Please remember to turn on the notification bell so you know every time I post a new video. I don't stick to a schedule, so if you don't do that, you may not know when I post a new video, and you might want to. <laughs> Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the Yarn Zebra family. I would love to have you over here. Remember, life happens, yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Goodbye.